We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. I say, hold on now. You got a little too much dip on your chip right there now, boy. The bird buddy is not going like this one. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. I got a question. Hopefully, you guys checked out my unpacked video. If not, you can fast forward to the end of this video. I'll put a card so you guys really need to watch that part one to get an idea of what I'm talking about here, right here, right now. Cliff Notes. Terrence Crawford's homie took to boxing Twitter X, whatever it's called right now, and he made some statements and basically on behalf of the team, on behalf of Crawford, and he was basically saying that Terrence Crawford offered Errol Spence the fight at 147, hoping he doesn't take the fight because he wants to move on and set history and do something that hasn't been done, which is to fight Canelo Alvarez at super middleweight and move up three weight classes. Listen now, some of the boxing fans... They're acting like they're cool with this. What part of the game is this? What has Terrence Crawford done to get to skip the line and get in front of actual super middleweights who plan on staying there and campaigning there to get a shot at Canelo? Furthermore, we don't even know if Canelo beats Jermail Charlo because that's a whole Showtime pay-per-view. And if everybody knew, then no one would buy the fight because they would already know the outcome. But I guarantee you this will do good numbers. You know, I think it'll be a good fight and do good numbers because truthfully, you don't know what's going to happen. You can have your prediction and you could speculate, but it's boxing. Jamel Charlo has a chance. Canelo Alvarez has a chance. So that's really weird that this is the aim for Terrence Crawford. I mean, Terrence Crawford already took to social media, made a video about it. And he basically said, oh, the PBC and they try to play keep him away. All the stuff he said in the past. He's literally talking like he's a top ranked fighter still. Hey, PBC, they didn't want to F Danny Garcia, F Keith Thurman. I'll never give you guys an opportunity because you made a whole side of the street to not fight me. All these kind of things. You're supposed to be working with these people and you're basically being petty and... I don't know, creating issue about Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman. And people aren't really even talking about those fights. So the way Terrence Crawford is handling the success is a bit weird. You know, after the fight, after he beat Errol Spence, he was pretty gracious and said, hey, you know, you made this happen, Errol Spence. Post fight, he took to the stage, got on the mic and said he's definitely open to making the fight at 154, the rematch and things of that sort. He said 154, because this wasn't an easy weight cut for myself. I had to be disciplined, yada, yada, yada. But now the success had the float, had the parade in Omaha, and maybe he molded over and considered it. And now he's looking at it and he's like, bump that. Errol need to come to me. We don't even want to fight Errol. We want to move on because it's pointless. You know, and I have so many issues with that. I mean, Terrence Crawford, he's going to do whatever he wants to do. That's what he showed you his whole career. But then it opens the floodgate for people like me to have my opinion. And that's what I'm giving you right now. So the issues I have with that, a couple of them, right? Terrence Crawford, again, said he was open to 154. You know that Errol Spence struggled to make the weight. And herein lies the problem with the Bud Buddies. Immediately after the fight, the Bud Buddies literally said that, oh, there's a skill gap. Errol Spence... He not on Crawford's level. He got tore up. He got thrashed. He got beat so bad. And people who have been riding with Errol Spence, Errol Spence fans, if you will, came back and said something was up with Errol Spence. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but let's address the elephant in the room. He looked very off. Like before he was even getting punched by Crawford, he looked off. Maybe that weight cut got to him. And then the Bud Buddies, no, no, no. He lost because Crawford's a better fighter. Crawford got more skills. That's literally what they said. 
So why would you not be willing to fight Errol Spence at 154 if you said weight drain and his weight and the weight cut had nothing to do with it? Listen, I spent so many bars, it deserves a pullback. I'm going to say it again. Immediately upon defeating Errol Spence, the Bud Buddies told me they were convinced that the what we saw had nothing to do with Errol Spence inactivity, him being off, having a very bad night in the office, no weight drain, nothing. What they seen was Terrence Crawford skillfully is on another planet and Errol Spence can't mess with him. That's what they said. So if that is the case and you said post fight 154, you're definitely open to that. Why would it now be a different thing where you're saying you don't want the fight at 154, you're wanting the fight at 147 and you're really hoping he doesn't take it. So what does that stipulate? You want the fight at 47 and you're hoping he doesn't take it. And you know that there's a chance maybe he doesn't take it if it's at 47 because he can't make the weight. Now the Bud Buddies and Crawford, they said, oh, everyone's going to make excuses. So if you fought him at 154, that's it. Like you beat him. First of all, if you beat him twice, it is what it is. Second of all, if you beat him in a new weight class, then no one could really say anything. And the other thing is you've already set the history. You've already been undisputed two times. That's already done. So you don't really need the belt. And it looked like it was a hard weight cut for both fighters. So it seems to me that 154 would be the natural progression for both fighters because they both look very ghastly and gaunt throughout the, the fight week. The reason why on my channel, I didn't really stress Errol Spence being like looking like wasted and looking like, you know, sunken in a little bit is because he's told you that the weight cut is not easy. It's not an easy chore. So I was used to Errol Spence looking a bit drawn and, and sucked up on the fight week. And I was like, okay, you got a nutritionist, you know, everything he was saying, the right things. So I'm like, okay, taking his word for it, that he feels great. But I was used to him seeing, seeing him where he looked like, I don't know, frail or dehydrated or whatever, weight, weight drain. So Crawford, that was something new for me. I never really seen a fight in fight week, Crawford get to the stage and do the grand arrivals and stuff. And his face looked drawn and sunken in like he's struggling to make weight. And he looked so dry and his lips cracking and stuff. I never seen that. So that's why I put more emphasis on that specifically. But the Crawford fan said, no, that has nothing to do with it. Crawford is just skillfully on another planet. So it looks real bad if if this fight doesn't happen. You know, we'll see. As of me recording this video, I haven't heard any updates. And here's the thing. Crawford says he's the absolute best in the creme de la creme. You have a guy that clearly has stayed at the division so long in Errol Spence, where 47, he's going to probably turn up performances like he did. Because I, I told you something was looked off, you know? So if you want to rematch him, you want to put him through that just because you can, just because in the contract, the winner gets to pick it. But you want to say like, oh, it's the best for the best. As a competitor, you don't want to push yourself to fight the best version of a person, especially when you've already set the history for the undisputed portion. So that's already done. So the belts, you don't really need the belts once you've cleared that hurdle. And then here's the other thing. Let's talk about Jerron Boots Ennis. So if Errol Spence is wasting away and is going to put up performances like that because he can't make the weight anymore, right? Boots Ennis is at 47. Now you want to stay at 47, but then you said Boots fight doesn't make sense. That's your mandatory. You know, some people have even said Errol Spence, I don't even want to see the rematch fight Boots. But Crawford has found a way where he's saying Jerron Ennis at 47 doesn't do it for him and it doesn't he can't get up for that fight it makes no sense to fight Jerron Boots Ennis at 47 but then you want Errol at 47 just because you can and you know he can't really make the weight so he's wanting the fight at 54 post fight you said 54 was manageable and made it seem like you were very open to it so it's just kind of all over the place now here's the other thing you're talking about moving three weight classes, skipping 154, skipping 160 to meet Canelo. We don't even know if he wins, which is in and of itself its own issue. But outside of that, 
you have the to see what happens in Canelo Charlo. But beyond that, that's at 168. So you want to drain down and lose more weight for Arrow, knowing he can't make the weight, probably. That's what everyone's speculating, including guys like Floyd Mayweather, Shane Mosley, Boxing Ego, etc. Deontay Wilder even said Wilder post fight. He said that Errol Spence looked dry and dehydrated. So the whole world is saying, hey, something was up with Errol Spence. I think it was the weight cut or something that they're holding back. Crawford's team and his fans said, no, absolutely not. But then they don't want to test that theory that Crawford's just better by fighting at 54, which would give both of them a break. But so you don't want to fight at 54. You'd rather fight at 47 for Errol, but you don't want to fight Jerron Ennis at 47 because it doesn't, quote, make sense. But you want to fight Canelo at 168. So why wouldn't you go to 154 to show you could beat Errol Spence, give Errol Spence an opportunity where he's not, you know, a dead man on the scale. And I'm not saying you give him a chance to win because at the end of the day, Crawford fans said that Errol Spence is not on the level of Crawford. So the weight doesn't matter. This literally what they said. They said the weight doesn't matter. The weight class has no, no bearing on the outcome. So it's not really giving him an advantage. Crawford is faster. Crawford has faster feet, all this stuff. They said it was a skilled thing. It has nothing to do with weight, but they don't want to test that theory. So you don't want to fight Errol Spence where he wants to fight at 54, yet you want to pass 54 to fight Canelo at 168. That doesn't really make sense to me. If y'all can make it make sense, you're better than me. Subscribe to the channel. Now YouTube will show you a card. Check out the first video. Let me know what you guys think. I'll keep you posted. And we out. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.